Hey, what's going on everybody? Today we're going to learn how to actually tilt your device so you can actually move an object. And from there we're going to go into Scene Kit Builder and we're going to build our own maze game. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so first thing we're going to do is open up Xcode, create a new Xcode project. And from there, this will be a game. So go ahead, click next. Our product name, I'm just going to call mine maze. You can of course call it whatever you want. Product name, I'm just gonna call mine Maze, although you can really call this whatever you want. Our language will be set to Swift, our game technology will be equal to Sprite Kit, and our devices will be universal. So let's go ahead, click Next, and Create. And from there, let's go ahead and make this a bit bigger. And my headphones are in the way. I don't know where to put these. On the floor is fine. Now inside of our project, we're just gonna head right over to our game scene.swift. And inside of this, we're just going to delete everything that's inside of our did move to view. And we're actually just going to delete everything that's inside of our touches began, even the touches began itself, because we're not gonna be using it in this tutorial. So from here, we need to go up here to our imports and we're going to say import our core motion, like so. So the core motion framework just basically holds your accelerometer, your gyroscope that are already built into your iPhone. And from there, you can grab the data from that and use it to change the scene or do whatever you want really according to how much this is tilted. So now that we have that imported, we're gonna go over to our game scene and we're going to say, let our manager, this will be the manager of all our motion data, equal a CM motion manager, like so. And then open close parentheses. Now what we want to do with this manager is actually update it inside of our did move to view so it starts actually measuring data immediately. So we're going to say manager dot start accelerometer updates. So that's automatically saying that we're starting the accelerometer, we're grabbing and we're going to grab the data from that and use it accordingly. So in here we're going to say manager dot accelerometer update interval and we're going to set this equal to 0 0.1. So every tenth of a second it's going to grab the data that's coming from the device and we're going to do stuff with that right now. So we're going to say manager dot start accelerometer updates to Q. Now this Q is asking for an NS operation Q. So we're just going to type in NS operation Q dot. And you can read all about that right over here if you want. But either way, NS operation Q and then just say dot main Q. So this is everything associated with our NS operation queue that's going on. Now with the handler, this is essentially saying, what do you want to do with this data that we're grabbing from here? So the handler, we're actually going to delete this. This is just a simpler way of doing things. We're going to delete that, keep the parentheses at the end, and we're going to say open curly bracket, close curly bracket, like so. And right now it's actually asking for two arguments. So you could just put it in like that. But the thing is we actually need to grab our data. So we're going to just say open close parentheses like so and then data. So this data is going to hold everything that's inside of our accelerometer. Now we're also going to take that data and do stuff with it, but it's expecting another update. So if there's an error, we just want to see that there's an error. I'm not going to really deal with this, but I'm just going to create an object named error. And then it's still giving me a little warning, so just type in in and that should fix everything. So now everything inside of this queue will be triggered every 0.1 seconds. So what do we want to do with this data? Well, we can say self.physicsworld.gravity. So we're going to change the gravity according to our accelerometer. And we're going to make this equal to a CG vector make and then this will be of a direction x value and a direction y value. Now for our x value, we're just going to say data.acceleration dot x and you can see it's giving me this little warning because it's expecting a cg float value so what you want to do here is just type in cg float and then open parentheses like so and then just keep the data dot acceleration dot x right inside of there now it's also going to create this little fix for me that you need to add parentheses around the data dot acceleration dot x and add an exclamation point so be sure you do that or else it won't work properly now we're also just going to take pretty much everything that we put inside of our x value and put that right into our y value and then we're just going to change the acceleration type to y so this is pretty much all the code you need to actually start moving your objects. Now we actually need to create some objects. So let's go over to our game scene.sks. And right inside of here, I'm going to first change the size of our scene equal to a width of 1080 and a height of 1920. That way we have the typical iPhone screen uh, aspect ratio. And now we also need to go down here, click and drag a color sprite right onto our scene. This will be our main person that we're going to be moving around. So I'm going to take this sprite right here and I'm going to head right up here to my attributes inspector, go over to the name, and I'm just going to change this over to 
our player. Now I'm giving it a name so that we can actually reference it inside of our game scene.swift. Now we'll do this in just a second. We also need to go down here to our physics definition and we're gonna say body type it will be equal to a bounding rectangle. Dynamic will be equal to true allows rotation equal to true affected by gravity will be equal to true. I'm gonna make my category bit mask equal to one. Our collision bit mask will be equal to two. We want it to collide with stuff that has collision mask of two. And our field mask we're just gonna set this equal to one and our contact bit mask will be equal to two. Later on we're going to add an exit and that's going to have the category mask of two. So we're just going to check the collisions between those. And now that's pretty much everything you need for that. Now let's also go up here to our color sprites and I'm just going to create some walls. So I'm just gonna click and drag an SK sprite node on like so. Go over to our body type inside of this new node that we created. Go over to bounding rectangle. We don't want this to be a dynamic. We don't want it to allow rotation and we don't want it to be affected by gravity. It's just gonna be a wall that sits there and it's going to block the player from going off the scene. Now we can just copy and paste that so that we can have our four walls going on. So let's just go ahead and do that. Now obviously you could make this a lot better looking, but this is just the basic fundamentals of how to do something like this. So now that we have everything done, we should actually be able to build and run this and our player will be affected by the gravity that's changing according to the accelerometer inside of our device. And obviously you will need a device because it's not going to work in a simulator because you can't just pick up your Mac and yeah. So let's connect up our device and build and run. And now as you can see, I'm able to remove my device and the gravity of my scene actually changes according to how I position my phone. Now one thing you'll notice right now is that it's super slow. So let's head over to our project again and we're gonna go right over here to our manager and where we go right here to our data.acceleration.x and we're just going to take that data and we're going to multiply that by 10. We're also going to do that with our y value, so go multiply that by 10. So now if we were to build and run this, we should actually have a, the gravity to more of my liking. So now you can actually start moving your device and the gravity of your player will move accordingly. Now one thing I'm noticing right now is that it keeps me switching over to landscape mode because I'm changing my device's gravity. So let's head over to our project navigator. We're gonna go right over here to our device orientation and we're just gonna make it portrait. And for some reason, accelerometer updates are a little bit funny in landscape mode. So I'm going to keep it in portrait. So now let's go ahead and do this. So now I can start turning my device and it's not gonna head over to landscape mode. That's how you move your character. Now we're actually going to build more of a maze. So I'm just gonna go right back over to our scene. I'm gonna zoom out of my scene and I'm just going to create some walls. So click and drag some SK Sprite nodes on there, like so. These will have, of course, a body type of a body rectangle. Turn off all those check marks and then we can start taking that, copying and pasting and we can create our own little maze. And from here, we can also create another color sprite. Let's put it right down here. And we'll make this a blue color, or really whatever color you want. And then you can take this color sprite. I'm going to name this my end node, like so. I'm also gonna go right down here, go over to my physics definition. This will be a body type of a bounding rectangle. We turn off all of this stuff. We don't want it to be affected by the gravity or anything like that. And then we can go over to our category mask. This will be equal to two. Collision mask will be equal to one. We want it to collide with our player. Our field mask, we're also gonna make this equal to one. And our contact mask will be equal to one as well. So now with that information, we can head over to our game scene.swift and let's go ahead and create our player and our end node. So we're gonna say let our player equal an SK sprite node, open parentheses, close parentheses. And then inside of our did move to view, we're gonna say player will be equal to a self dot child node with name. And of course the name of it was our player. And it looks like this is a let value. So let's just go ahead and change this over to a var value. And it also is grabbing this as an SK node. So let's go ahead and just convert this as an SK sprite node. Now also with this, let's go ahead and create our end node. So I'm gonna say var end node will be equal to an SK sprite node, open close parentheses. And now with this end node, we're going to go right down here and say our end node will be equal to our self dot child node with name. And the name of our end node was again end node. And then this of course will be as an SK sprite node, as we said. Now what we're wanting to do here is check collisions. So we're going to go up here to our class game scene. We're just going to add a comma and we're just going to say SK physics contact delegate like so. And this will allow us to take this game scene and delegate to everything that happens physics contact wise. So now we can go down here to our did move to view 
and we're going to say self.physicsworld.contactdelegate will be equal to self, because the scene itself is going to regulate any contact things going on. And then also embedded inside of this SK physics contact get delegate, we need to go down here and say did begin contact. Now inside of this contact, we have two bodies. So we're going to take these two bodies. We're going to say var body A will be equal to our contact dot body A. And then we're also going to say our variable body B will be equal to our contact dot body B. And then with these contact bodies, we can go right down here and say if our body A dot category bit mask is equal equal to one and the body dot category bit mask is equivalent to two, then we can do this stuff in here. And then also with this, we wanted to make sure it's checking the other way around. So we can take this first thing right here. We're going to add two straight up lines like that. And that's just basically saying if this statement or the statement right after this is true, then we get to run uh, whatever we do down there. And then also in the second part right here, we need to change our body A equivalent to two and our body B equivalent to one. So we're just basically checking whether or not our body A collided with our body B and if their category bit masks are one and two, that we were checking if it's a player and our end node colliding. So right here we have our body A dot category bit mask. Now as you can remember, we did this back in our game scene dot SKS where we have our body A and our player will be equal to a category bit mask of one. So we also, we're grabbing that category bit mask and we're testing that along with the second body. Now I'm not gonna really do anything fancy in here, but this is essentially what you would do when you end the game or you win the game. So let's go ahead and just say print you won. And that's pretty much all we're going to do. So now this is at least going to check whether or not we have collided with our bodies or not. So now as you can see, I can play my game and as soon as I hit the blue player, you can see that it says you won. Thank you all so much for watching. If you enjoyed this tutorial, be sure to hit that like button down below. And if you want to see more videos like this from me in the future, be sure to subscribe. If you have any suggestions for future tutorials, be sure to leave that down in the comment section down below. I'd love to hear your ideas. Anyway, I will see you in the next one.